Today, I decided to put my skills to the test once again and recreate one of my favorite VR games, Super Hot VR. From the environment, the enemy, the weapon, the time control, it felt like a lot to do, but I was craving to learn the secret behind this game. I started downloading this free sci-fi warehouse pack, and to recreate the white and shadowy look of the game, I selected all of the 3D models of the scene and assigned them this white color material. But for some reason, everything turned out great. So that's where I head over to the Unity Lighting settings and tweak the environment lighting source. Perfect, I could already see the player over there fighting enemy that would come out behind this shelf. Fight. Next, I remove everything that the player would not see. It's best to keep everything optimized the earlier I can. The final touch was to add an oversaturated light near these windows to bring out the shadow of the scene. And with a little white fog, it felt like I had the scene of my game ready. Now, it was time to move on to the next step, make the player. Once again, I was lucky to find some tutorials on YouTube made by a certain Valem Tutorials, a weird name, but anyway. This guy has a new tutorial series for everyone to learn how to make a VR game. Maybe you can go and give him a subscribe, he looks like a cool guy. Anyway, using what I learned, I now add a small VR player with animated hands. Next, I made this gun that I could grab and that could shoot a bullet. And to match the style of the game, I added this red trail to follow it. But what I didn't expect it to be so hard was the other weapons in the game. You see, in Super Hot, you can throw anything in the face of the enemy. But there is a subtle aim assist to help the player aim at the enemy. If I wanted to make this game as fast as I could, there was no way I would have enough time to cut this. So instead, I simply increased the velocity of the object when it's thrown and it turned out so great. But there really was only one way to test this. At this point, I had to focus on making the enemy. I imported the 3D character that looks like the one from the game. I really like how making this character with more smoothness added to the effect with the style of the scene. Anyway, let's throw some weapon at that lucky guy. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. The trick I found to create fast collision detection for an enemy is to turn it into a ragdoll. Now that the character has colliders and even physics properties, we can write a little script on each of his limbs that will check the collision, and then enable the ragdoll. This is super useful because we can make this work with a bullet, any object that we throw, or even our fist. I know some of you feels bad that I'm bullying this little guy, so let's give him a chance to fight us back. I previously made some game with enemy that shoot, or even enemy that walks, but this time I wanted to combine everything in one. So I imported these two animations, one to make the player run, one to make him shoot, then I made the enemy follow us by using the Unity Navmatch AI. Looking back, I think I should have picked another animation that does not seem like he's doing his morning jog. Next step was to make the enemy stop and shoot. So I checked the distance with the player and simply triggered the shooting animation when it was below a certain value. Now the only things missing was of course the gun. So to save me some time, I just duplicated the gun I was using for myself, attached it to the right hand bone of the character and triggered the shooting using the animation. Okay, so far I had both an enemy and my player ready, but the main mechanism of the game was still missing, and I'm talking of course about time control. You see, in Super Earth, time only moves when you do. So to replicate that effect, I check the movement of both my hands and the head and use it to scale the global time scale of the game. And come on, look at this. Never in my life I had seen so much change happen from only writing a single line of code. This is the coolest effect ever. But anyway, with time shift, it was now easier to dodge the bullets, so I thought it would be cool to also be able to grab them to throw them back at the enemy, but that's where I found this goofy bug. <laughs> Another cool thing to do now with time control was to grab the enemy weapon once we kill it, so I started by separating the gun from the character, but the trickier part was to make sure that the gun always jump in the direction of the player. This interaction turned out so cool, but I had still one thing to do, and it's duplicate the enemy all over our scene. And finally, in Super Hot, the next level is always revealed when the player starts grabbing an object. So to create this effect, I remove the bottle's gravity and trigger this small fog animation when we first grab it. And in the end, this is how it all turned out.
there you go guys i hope that you enjoy watching this video this project turned out so cool but i have a great news for you watching this i use this video to create a full one hour tutorial on my patreon so if you want to do this yourself join us link in the description shout out to all of my new patrons that are appearing on the screen right now thank you for watching and see you soon